Hi class, welcome to lecture four, part B. We're gonna continue our discussion on political parties, but now we're gonna shift gears to voter turnout. And I actually recently changed this slide. We had seen really up until, I would say around 2016, a steady decline in voting numbers, less and less people were voting. But what we've seen now is an increase really since 2016, a lot more people being involved. In fact, the 2020 presidential election, 67% of people voted, which is very high. So we're seeing it go up again. You know, maybe we attribute that to the, the political climate being as crazy as it is, or the COVID vaccine giving more people time to vote. You know, there's, there could be numerous reasons, but 67% uh, is much better than we've experienced in, in some recent years. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at some demographics and how they affect voting turnout. I wanna point out, these are generalizations and this is data that we look at to make assumptions. This doesn't mean that if you're the member of some race or gender or religion that necessarily you're gonna vote this way, just what the data has told us so far. So we know that non-Hispanic whites tend to vote at the highest rates followed very closely by African-Americans and Hispanic and Asians tend to vote at lower rates. So we have some data to back that up. Um, Here's up until 2014, you can see uh, non-Hispanic whites, as I said, vote at the highest rates. African-Americans vote at slightly lower rates with an exception of 2008 and 2012. Why is the African-American vote higher than the, the uh, non-Hispanic white vote those two years? Uh, that was the year that Barack Obama, both years Barack Obama uh, won the election. So I think what we can take from this is that certain demographics perhaps do not vote because they don't feel represent, represented. We know that in the political system, most politicians tend to be white and most politicians tend to be male. So I think as this starts to even out, and it is, you're getting more diversity in all levels of government. I think these levels of voting, voter turnout will kind of even out for everybody. Um, and then you can see Hispanic and other um, races are slightly lower as well. What else can we look at the data and determine? Age is a big indicator of whether or not you will vote. Older people vote at much, much higher rates than younger people. In fact, the, Demo the age group of 65 to 74 are three times more likely to vote than those aged 18 to 24. 18 to 24 year olds really do not show up to the polls. Some do, but most don't. So it's, it's kind of strikes me as odd because I look at that, that generation, and I'm sure many of you fall into this age group, and they're very socially active and politically aware generation, but for whatever reason, that doesn't really translate to showing up to the polls. So if you're within this age group and you didn't vote or you're thinking about not voting, I encourage you to, of course, vote. It obviously makes a difference, but I'm also curious if, if you're not planning on voting or you know someone who didn't vote, why do you think that is? I think that's a very interesting question. Another indicator of voting is socio, socioeconomic status or wealth. So we know education primarily and wealth are consistent indicators of voting rates. Every level of education that you get higher, the likelihood of voting increases. So even with a high school degree, the, the statistics of voting likelihood increases over those who do not have a high school degree. And same with college, secondary degree, et cetera. Also, people of higher levels of income tend to vote at much higher rates. Why do you think that is? Maybe they feel like they have more to lose. You know, if there's a tax increase, maybe it affects them more. You know, there's, there's mul multiple reasons, perhaps. So here's a chart that kind of just goes over what I was saying. Uh, very interesting. You can see we talked about kind of race by race, voting numbers by race. Look at voting numbers by gender. You'll notice that women vote at around 2% higher rate than men, which is significant. Why do you think women are voting at higher rates than men? Uh, we also notice that women are attending and graduating college and uh, secondary to getting second degrees at higher rates than men. So the, the future is looking good for women. Uh, men, we need to pick up the slack here and get our voting rates up. Here's my age, 18 to 24, typically only around 20, 25% vote compared to age 65 to 74, around 60%. So that is a huge, huge difference. If you're upset at the result of election, you need to get out and vote because your grandparents are voting, right? And typically young people and, and older people tend to be on opposite sides of the political spectrum. Elderly people tend to vote more conservatively. Younger people tend to vote more liberally. So, you know, 
those numbers are very telling. Uh, elder, older people in that age group really show up to grow, to vote. Here you can see education and look how dramatic this is. I think this maybe is the biggest indicator on whether or not we can expect certain uh, people to vote, right? If, for people who didn't make it to high school, only around 16% vote compared to advanced degrees around 62% vote. In every stage of education, the likelihood of voting increases. So why do you think that is? I think that's a good question as well. Maybe because they, they, they know more about the world, they know more about politics, et cetera. But I'm curious just to know what you guys think as well. And then of course, income as well. Every bracket until over 150, you can see the more pe money people make, the more likely they are to vote. Okay, so that short part B concludes our lecture four. As always, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to email me or message me on Canvas and have a wonderful day.